In this video, I'm going to talk about some of the basic selection tools that are utilized inside of GIMP. Now, selection tools actually have numerous uses in honestly any type of image editing software. First off, as the name implies, yes, a selection tool can be used to make selections. However, some of the other elements that it can be used for include things such as creating barriers so that you can paint and work within them. So I'm going to go ahead here and I'll show you kind of different ways on both a graphic, but also to we're going to make a new file here to have a thumbnail going up here. And we're just going to go ahead and do uh, a quick uh, 1366 background here. So first thing, I'm going to come back to my graphic here. When you're working with the selection tools, one thing to point out is you want to make sure you're working on the active layer and also to in that active layer, make sure that you don't have anything locked. Um, that can make things a little bit tricky as far as working is concerned, especially as far as the pixels go. If you're working with a specific graphic, that actually probably means that you want to come in and you want to use, you know, as far as making a selection and moving it. Now, let's go ahead and focus on the toolbox up here. As a friendly reminder, whenever you're working in GIMP or any type of imaging editing software, remember to keep an eye out in the lower right hand side here for those small arrows. That means that you have a collapsed tool there. So you have your primary move tool, but also right next to it then you have the rectangle and ellipse, followed by the scissor and free, and then the fuzzy select tool. These are the kind of the core five that I want to go over in this video. So let's just start with the rectangle. It's kind of old reliable here. And what you can do with this is, is it's exactly like it sounds. So let's say I want to select just the cat's face. So I go ahead, I click and drag and hold. And I drag out to select the area that I want to work with. Now when you release, I do want to point out, you get what are called, we like to call them the marching ants. That's showing the space of where you're actually able to work. So now I want to take you through the different tools that you can work with whenever you're working inside a selection tool. So long as you have the selection tools active, so in this case, the rectangle selection tool, I can still go in and make edits to this selection. For instance, if I work within the center here and just click and hold, you see how I can actually reposition the overall selection. Now, one thing unique to GIMP though, is if you go into one of the four corners here, you'll see that a rectangular box appears. You can actually come in and resize. So I could resize it, kind of maybe get a little bit tighter on the face there. Now, if you hover on the horizontal or vertical areas, you'll see even longer rectangular boxes. This allows you to scale in and out as far as the shape is concerned. So maybe I want to tighten this up even a little bit more here. All right, now for the other rule when working with any selection tool. So long as you have an active selection, it will stay active until you actually tell it to not be active by going to the select drop down menu and telling it none. So to demonstrate this here, what happens whenever you switch to say your move tool? Notice those marching ants are actually still present here. So now if I actually come in and now I'm going to switch to the move tool here. Now, before I dive in here, just to show you a little bit what you can do with this. First off, I want to draw your attention to the actual tool options for the move. There is a tool toggle here that you can either pick a layer or guide to move around. So in this case, if I unlock my background layer, I could reposition the background layer based on the selection. Or I could technically choose right next to it here. It's a little small, but there is a move and there are little icons here where I can actually choose to move the selection and reposition it one more time. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do here is what you can do is let's go to edit and do a cut. There you see that we removed that piece of the cat and now I could come over onto my new 
document here and I could do a paste. Now, a couple of things here. When you paste a selection, it's going to want to stay in place here. And you're going to actually notice down at the bottom that you can change based on how it was pasted in. So you have either generating it as a new layer, which it highlights in green. You can actually anchor it to the layer behind it. So in this case, it would be my background layer. And I don't really want to do that. Or I can say, you know what? I changed my mind. I don't want to actually do this. So like, for instance, if we go ahead and click on the create a new layer, notice what it did for me there. Coming in and placing it like this is great. But if we go back to the original graphic now, this is kind of one of the dangers of working with selections. Notice it's done, we like to call it almost damage to the original graphic. Like if I wanted to get this graphic back to the way it was, I would have to not save it and re-import the graphic, which can be fine. As we move through the class though, there's gonna be other options. However, now that I'm done working in this section here, notice how I still have those marching ants on this original graphic. So I'm gonna go up to select, and I'm gonna say none. Now, just as a note, the none option, you can see the keyboard shortcut right next to it. I encourage you to get comfortable with that keyboard shortcut. But now I've removed that, it's no longer selected, I can go in and make new selections. So that's working with the rectangle and ellipse selection tool. The ellipse works the exact same way. That's why they're grouped together. So you can do some great things as far as coming in and being able to make selections to pull them out. You can now add a background color. I could add a special effect onto my graphic or I can do it as an overlay, which we'll get to. But this can be really, really helpful as far as coming in and now being able to work with this individual object. So under move, I went back to move the layer and now I can kind of reposition the piece, the little piece of the graphic, how I want to have it positioned.